Okay, so let's uh, let's so we, we've we've talked about the plan A. We've seen kind of a canvas, and now the the next thing really is here that we want to talk about is how do we identify risks on the startup, and then how do we start to systematically test those risks. So we'll kind of breeze through these these slides. There's a lot of more content that you will have in the book, but it should give you still give you a good sense of um, of how you look at risks. So the first thing that I I want to cover is there are really three types of risks that we we kind of cover three categories of risk. There's product risk, which is getting the product right. Um, there is customer risk, which is building this path to customers. And then market risk, which is all about building the viable business plan. And at every stage, we're we are looking to mitigate all three risks to, to at, in, in some way simultaneously and, and kind of go around the canvas. So I'll talk about how we look at that from a canvas sense. So looking, looking at the canvas, I already kind of alluded to the top three risks that I, I, I think can vary from product to product. So like in the book example that I threw out there, I didn't think pricing was as risky because a book is going to be typically charged between $20 and $30, and it's a business book. A lot of people um, are, are ready to pay that, so it's not as risky. But I still look at these as kind of universal risks that I put every canvas through, and if you can hit those three risks, then you kind of sit back and see if there are other risks that may be higher than, than these. But I always, almost always start with the problem risk, is that for the customers you're going after, is, is that really a, a problem that you know, they, they have and that more importantly they know they have and maybe are doing something about. The, the thing we saw in the last canvas is going out and the way you mitigate that is just through the interviewing process, trying to understand their view on, on those problems. The second thing that tends to trip up a lot of startups is channels, which we spend a lot of time talking about, and then finally revenue streams. So you, you might even succeed in going out and building something people use and people like, but if you have no way to, to kind of build a sustainable business behind it, unless you build a really big asset that something like Twitter that's just too big to fail, um, most startups do fail because they can't kind of build a sustainable business to back what they're doing and they'll run out of resources, they won't be able to get the traction they need and they'll kind of go out of business. So you kind of have to look at, at that as well. 